The Galton Whistle by L. Sprague de Camp. This is an interesting story. Um, so far out of the three that I've read in here, this is, I think, my least favorite. And that's not because this one was bad by any means. Uh, but it's more of what you would expect from a pulpy, vintage science fiction story. The male main character... Um, who's able to accomplish everything the the female character who is the damsel in distress who needs rescuing and and serves mostly as a plot point and a device uh with, with a very uh, underwhelming twist at the end but it did have a, an interesting protagonist or uh antagonist and uh you know, as a whole, I think it was fine. Um, probably not the best DeCamp story to, to start with, but certainly fits right in with the collection, what you would expect from the good old stuff. So let's uh, hear what Gardner had to say about Mr. DeCamp. L. Sprague DeCamp is a seminal figure, one whose career spans almost the entire development of modern science fiction and fantasy. Much of the luster of the golden age of astounding during the late 30s and the 40s is due to the presence in those pages of De Camp, along with his great contemporaries Robert A. Heinlein, Theodore Sturgeon, and A. E. Van Vogt. At the same time, for astounding sister magazine Unknown, he helped to create a whole new modern style of fantasy writing, funny, whimsical, and irreverent, of which he is still the most prominent practitioner. De Camp's stories for Unknown are among the best short fantasies ever written, and include such classics as The Wheels of If, Nothing in the Rules, The Hardwood Pile, and, written in collaboration with Fletcher Pratt, the famous Harold Shea stories that would later be collected as The Complete Enchanter. In science fiction, he is the author of Less Darkness Fall, in my opinion one of the three or four best alternate world nov novels ever written, as well as the, at the time, highly controversial novel Rogue Queen, and a body of expertly crafted short fiction such as Judgment Day, Divide and Rule, A Gun for Dinosaur, and Aristotle and the Gun. DeCamp may be primarily known today as a humorist, perhaps best remembered for the unknown stories in the Howard Shea saga, but everything he writes has a strong element of fast-paced adventure to it. Just as even the most headlong and swashbuckling of his adventure tales contains a generous portion of wry humor, his greatest contribution to the evolution of the space opera is the Viagens in Planetarius, which means interplanetary tours in Portuguese, the language of the dominant political and economic power of DeCamp's future Earth, Brazil. Sequence of stories and novels, sometimes also referred to as the Krishna series, after the name of the alien planet on which many of them take place, detailing the intricate and sometimes contentious interrelations that develop between Earthmen and the intelligent native species who inhabit nearby regions of space. Intelligence is a quality that suffuses every DeCamp story, just as surely does humor. DeCamp's space opera is just smarter than that of most of his contemporaries. You can see that a very shrewd mind is working out the background details and structure of such an interstellar society would be like, and the consequences that would inevitably result, insisting on logic, rigor, and consistency even within the framework of the interplanetary swashbuckler. There's no such thing as faster than light travel in the Viagens universe, for instance, and that generates some inevitable and surprising consequences that few other authors writing a space adventure tale would have bothered to deal with. The intelligence of the conceptualization that went into the background of the Viagen story shows up everywhere, not least in DeCamp's prediction that Brazil would be the dominant power on Earth by the middle of the 21st century, the old superpowers having by then exhausted and bankrupted themselves. A prediction considered to be wild and extravagantly unlikely when DeCamp made it back in the 50s, but one which seems increasingly credible these days, and one which makes the Viagen stories look remarkably contemporary, in spite of being almost half a century old. Nor, in spite of all the intellectual rigor that went into them, are they the least bit solemn or slow. Instead, they remain among the most colorful and vivid stories of interplanetary adventure ever written, as the sly and suspenseful story that follows will amply demonstrate. Alright. So, the Viagens' Interplanetarius stories were assembled in the landmark collection The Continent Makers and Other Tales of the Viagens. The Viagens or Krishna novels, some of them recently reissued, include The Hand of Zay, 
Tower of Xanad, the Queen of Zamba, Virgin of Zesh, Prisoner of Zamanek, and the Hostage of Zur. The single best of these novels, in my opinion, is The Hand of Zay, which makes a good entry point into the series, and which is still often findable in second-hand bookstores. De Camp has continued to produce an occasional Krishna novel well into the 90s, the most recent of which are The Bones of Zora, The Storms of Nom Nomoru, and The Swords of Zinjahan, all written in collaboration with his wife, Catherine Crook de Camp. De Camp's other books include The Glory That Was, The Great Fetish, The Rel Reluctant King with Fletcher Pratt, in addition to the Harold Shea books, The Carnelian Cube, The Land of Unseen, and the collection Tales from Gangavan's Bar with Catherine Cook de Crook de Camp. In addition to collaborative Krishna novels, The Incorporated Knight and The Pixelated Pyrrhus, De Camp has also written another of Conan novels in posthumous collaboration with the late Robert E. Howard. He has also written a long sequence of critically acclaimed historical novels, including The Bronze God of Rhodes, An Elephant for Aristotle, The Dragon of the Ishtar Gate, The Arrows of Hercules, as well as a number of nonfiction books on scientific and technical topics. Literary biographies, such as his painstaking examination in the life of H.P. Lovecraft, Lovecraft, a biography, and Dark Valley Destiny, the life of Robert E. Howard, and critical biographical studies of fantasy and fantasy writers such as literary swordsmen and sorcerers. As editor, his anthologies include Swords and Sorcery, The Spell of Seven, The Fantastic Swordsman, and Warlocks and Warriors. His short fiction has been collected in the best of L. Sprague de Camp, A Gun for Dinosaur, The Purple Pterodactyls, and Rivers in Time. De Camp has won the Grand Master Nebula Award and the Gandalf or Grandmaster of Fantasy Award, as well as the prestigious Life Achievement Award given by the World Fantasy Convention. In 1997, he won a Hugo Award for his autobiography, Time and Change. He and his wife live in Texas. I'm guessing they may not live in Texas anymore. Uh, but there you have it. So, more than you probably want to know about DeCamp. But as always, I, I find Gardner's uh, information about these authors to be absolutely fascinating arguably the best part of this volume and the recommendations of short stories and novels and where to start and what they're known for i mean as somebody who's still only about a year into falling hard into science fiction this is invaluable for directing me toward what else to read by these authors so i i hope you enjoy that and stay tuned because uh tomorrow we will have jack vance and i am so excited to talk about that one. So thank you, book dude.